we just kind of uh, worked through what it means to do ideal reconstruction in the frequency domain. It means to use a filter that looks like this in terms of its amplitude response. Let's go ahead and work through the equivalent version of ideal reconstruction in the time domain. So let's go ahead and do what we call ideal band limited interpolation, which is also sometimes called sync interpolation. And you'll see why it's called sync interpolation here in just a minute. What we're trying to do is we're trying to recover the original signal spectrum. The original signal spectrum is what we've been calling X of omega. And we're going to do that by filtering the impulse sampled signal in the frequency domain with this ideal reconstruction filter HR of omega. And this is what we just did in the previous video. We thought about it in the frequency domain. What we're going to do now though is we're going to think about the equivalent version of this filtering process in the time domain. So if I take this signal right here and I transform it into the time domain, I can go ahead and do that. I can just take each term and transform it into the time domain. H or X of omega becomes X of T. HR of omega becomes HR of T. Multiplication in frequency becomes convolution in time. And then finally, X delta of omega, the spectrum of the impulse sampled signal, just becomes the impulse sampled signal. So I've transformed this equation into its equivalent time domain version. And we know what X delta of T is. Remember how we get X delta of T? We create the impulse sampled signal by taking our signal X of T and multiplying it by an infinite impulse train. So this is one way to write X delta of T. Equivalently, we know that this really just takes each impulse and weights it by the value of X of T at the location of the impulse. So we can also write it equivalently like this. So that's what X delta of T is. What about HR of T? What is the impulse response of this ideal low pass filter? Well, we know what HR of omega is. It's TS, remember that's that scale factor that it has on it. And HR of omega is basically a rectangle function. So it's a rectangle in the frequency domain. So it's a function of omega and it has a total width of omega s. If you go back to the picture on the previous slide, it goes from minus omega s over 2 to omega s over 2, so it has a total width of omega s. Here on the denominator, I've written this term a little funny. I have 2 times omega s over 2. Obviously, the 2's cancel, and this denominator is just equal to omega s, which says that the total width of this rectangle centered at omega equals zero is omega s. We've just written it in kind of a funny way. And the reason we've written it in kind of this weird way with a two times omega s over two is we've written it in a form that's very easy to look up in a Fourier transform table. So if you go to your Fourier transform table, you'll see something like this. You'll see some type of Fourier transform pair that says rectangle of omega over two a in frequency has a time domain signal that is a over pi sync AT. So this is a nice Fourier transform pair, and now it's clear why I've written it in this form. I've written it in the form 2 times a number because that is the form in my Fourier transform, 2 times A, where A is this parameter. One thing you have to be careful when you work with sync functions is make sure you're using the appropriate definition of the sync function. The sync function that we're using right here is sync of X is equal to sine X over X. Some people throw an additional pi term in here. Um, just make sure you're using the appropriate version of the sync function. But this version of sync is what we mean by the sync function here. So using this Fourier transform pair, we can apply this to this equation and write down what the impulse response is HR of T. So let's go ahead and do that. HR of T, TS is just a scale factor. It's just going to kind of come along for the ride. The Fourier transform pair says I need to put a pi on the denominator. So I've done that. And then I put A on the numerator. Remember what A is. A is omega s over 2, so I've placed omega s over 2 right here. So I'm just applying my Fourier transform table, and then I'm going to have sync A T. Sync of A is omega s over 2, then times T. So we've been able to write down, just using our Fourier transform table, what the impulse response of this ideal low pass filter is. And I can simplify this stuff out front a little bit. If we think about what this term is, TS times omega s over 2 pi. First of all, what is omega s? Omega s is just 2 pi times fs, because that's how we go from linear to radial frequency. Omega s 
then is 2 pi over ts because fs is just 1 over ts. So really what I have here is omega s equals 2 pi over ts. If I go plug that in to this equation, ts times omega s over 2 pi, I have ts times 2 pi over ts over 2 pi. I've just substituted in what I had for omega s, and basically everything cancels. The ts cancels, the 2 pi's cancel, and this is just equal to 1. So this scale factor out front is just equal to 1. So the impulse response actually simplifies to sink omega st over 2. So let's go back to our equation. We were trying to write down an equation in the time domain for x of t. We said that x of t was our impulse response convolved with the impulse sampled signal. We've solved for the impulse response. It's sync of omega st over 2. And we are going to convolve this with our impulse sampled signal. So we could stop here, but we can actually simplify this one more time. Anytime you convolve some signal with a set of impulses, that's very easy to do. All you have to do is take this signal into the sum and evaluate this signal at the location of the impulse. So mathematically what that means is we get to bring sync into, into this sum as long as we replace every t with t minus n ts. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to write down sync. We have omega s over 2 and we're going to replace t with t minus n ts. So my equation simplifies to this. I've been able to write x of t as this summation right here. And this is what we mean by ideal band-limited interpolation, or sometimes called sync interpolation. What this equation is, is it's an infinite weighted summation of time-shifted sync functions. There's all these sync functions. Each one's been shifted some multiple of our sampling period, t sub s, and each one has a different weight on the front, a different amplitude. So it's just this infinite collection of time-shifted sync functions. The reason we call this ideal is because we've used a filter whose impulse response is non-causal. If we plot HRFT, it's the sync function. It starts at minus infinity and goes to positive infinity. The part below zero makes it non-causal, and this infinite time extent is also something that we can't realize in the real world, so that's why we call it ideal. But this is the exact way to reconstruct x of t, get back to where we started, given just samples of the signal. We run it through this ideal low-pass filter whose impulse response is a sink, and that gives us this ideal band-limited interpolation equation. Graphically, here's what's going on. We're using a filter whose impulse response looks like a sink, and we're reconstructing this smooth curve here on the right using an infinite collection of time-shifted and weighted sync functions. So there's a sync function right here that has that weight, and there's another sync function right here that has this weight, and there's another sync function here, and a sync function here, and a sync function here. There's all these sync functions that all have different values, and at any given point in time, if I so say this point right in time right here, what do I do? I add up all the dashed lines, and the sum of all those dashed lines gives me the value of the solid line. So graphically, this is what we picture when we do sync interpolation. It's really just this infinite collection of sync functions that we've added up, all with different weights. And doing this returns us to this nice, smooth x of t function that we started with.